The tournament is over with the Besaid Aurochs or the Luka goers emerging victorious. And the people in Luka have been saved thanks to the combined efforts of the heroes and Seymour along with his Aeon, Anima. Despite the discord that the events of Luka have occurred, things have more or less gone back to normal and the events of the game center around our heroes once again. Waka announces his official retirement, at least for the time being, and commits to being Yuna's guardian full time. We then see Oron and Titus on one of the docks in Luka talking about the previous events. Here we discover one major detail. Then I went to Zanarkin, where I watched over you, so that one day I could bring you to Spira. Why did it have to be me? Jekt asked me to. Is he alive? It depends on what you mean by alive. He is no longer human. But then, I felt something object there in that shell, couldn't you? You must have felt him when you came in contact with Sin. It can't be. It is. Sin is Jekt. Titus obviously doesn't believe this, but Oren reassures him that it is the case. For the first time, his journey up until this point has become a bit more clear. Jet was the reason he came to Spira. Jet was the reason Titus' Xanarkand was attacked. Oren then goes to send his services to Yuna as her guardian and asks Titus to do the same. We then shift over to the overpass where the party is discussing the events that also just occurred until Oren and Titus arrive and offer to be Yuna's guardians. Sir Oren. Yuna. Sir. I wish to become your guardian. Do you accept? Uh. You're serious? You refuse? No, no. We accept, right everyone? Uh, of course, no problem at all. But why? I promised Braska. You promised my father? Thank you, Sir Oren. You're welcome to join us. And he comes oh. too. Hi, guys. Uh, howdy. This one I promised Jekt. Is Sir Jekt alive? Can't say. Haven't seen him in ten years. I see. You'll meet eventually. Yes, I'm looking forward to it. What's our itinerary? Where are we headed? The party then takes their time to gather their thoughts, and here we see Titus and Yuna have another conversation. This is where the iconic laugh scene occurs. <laughs> this is weird. Next, try laughing out loud. What? Come on, show me. shouldn't laugh anymore. The party then continue their journey into the Meehan High Road, 
we see that with the amount of Machina ruins laid out along the highway and on the distance that this was once part of a bigger civilization. They are then given lore behind the statue of Mihan, who founded the Crusaders and that now dedicate their lives to protecting Spira from sin. They were once feared as rebels to the Maesters of Yevon until Mihan earned their trust. The lore master then introduces himself as Makin, my guy, the historian of Spira who happens to know a lot about the history of the place. A little too much, one might think. You know what, I thought about individually introducing the characters we come across, but instead of rambling on about them, let's just take a watch. A good reply. I am relieved to hear you say that, milady Samana. Uh oh? Where are my manners? I am matron, a scholar, at your service, milady. I am on a journey, studying the history of our world, Spira, seeking its stories and secrets. My travels have taken me to many places, and I am troubled by what I have seen. Lady Summoner, I presume. Yes, I am Yuna. I am Lucille, captain of the Jose Chocobo Knights. And I'm Alma. We've been charged to guard the high road. There have been reports of a large fiend appearing in this area with a taste for chocobos. Do take care, Samani Yuna, if you are to rent any chocobos. Thank you. We will be careful. Good. We should get back to our rounds. Farewell. Our prayers are with you. A large fiend? Hmm. Let's go get him! Why? It's the right thing to do. It's the right thing to do. <laughs> What'd I say now? Jekt said that a lot, too. <laughs> and every time he said it, it meant trouble for Braska and me. <laughs> My lady summoner. You're a summoner? Yes. My name is Yuna. I'm Callie. Nice to meet you, Callie. Lady Yuna, are you going to bring us the calm? Yes. <laughs> Very soon. <laughs> Yay! <laughs> We're looking forward to another calm, my Lady Summoner. I'll do my best. And good luck to your guardians as well. What's the calm? The calm is a time of peace. It comes after a summoner defeats Sin and lasts until Sin reappears. Uh... Huh? Sin dies and is reborn. I get it! I thought it was weird. Yuna's dad defeated Sin ten years ago, right? But Sin's still here. Didn't make much sense till now. Wait, if it just comes back... Don't say it isn't worth it. Because it is. Even for a little while. People can sleep in their beds without being afraid. That kind of time is worth anything. Don't say it isn't worth it. Your words that day, Yuna, I remember them well. But Yevon's teachings say... Enough! I... I, I only meant to... Are you all right? Lady Summoner? Yes, I am Yuna. It is an honor, my lady. My name is Shalinda. I am a disciple of Yevon. What was all that about? The Crusaders operation? <sighs> you mean the one Gata and Luzu were talking about? Mm. I heard they were to use forbidden machina. I had to stop them. Huh? Why? 
The use of Machina is strictly forbidden by the Yevon priesthood. That's bad, yeah? Let them use whatever they want. They still won't defeat Sin. But it's not about defeating Sin. The teachings of Yevon must be upheld. Yeah, right. But you don't understand. The Crusaders won't even listen to me. And it's all because I'm just a lowly acolyte. Don't say that. <sighs> well, I haven't been a summoner for very long myself, you see. Still, I can't put myself down every time I fail. People are depending on me. They're depending on both of us. Yes. Yes, you're right, my lady. Absolutely right. <laughs> Thank you so much, Lady Yuna. Now, I feel I have the courage to finish my training. We see that based on some of these segments, it looks like the Crusaders are preparing for a big operation, as many of them are gathering and preparing themselves. Yes, that's a lot. Anyway, after a long trek through half of the highway, the party take a break at the travel agency, despite Waka's resistance to doing so at an Albed establishment. I mean, let's be honest, at the end of the day, rest is far more important than avoiding some heathen group. After some time to rest, we get to see the sunset, which, by the way, is a beautiful view. As someone who likes to hike, seeing views like this is truly amazing to me. Titus then approaches Yuna and tries to assure her about defeating Sin, but we can see that Yuna is hiding more than what she is saying to him, definitely showing his lack of knowledge to the true cycle of death in Spira. Yuna? Why does Sin always come back? Sin is our punishment for our vanity. And it will not go away until we've atoned. How do we do that? Mm. What did we do that was so bad in the first place? Ah, was it using lots of machina or something? Oh, wait, was that such a bad thing, really? Uh, it's funny. Hmm? Ever since I was young, I never questioned it. But now that you ask me if it is that bad or not... I don't know. There are so many things I don't know. Well then, we're the same. I think the touch of Titus not knowing anything about Spira helping plant the seeds of the direction of the story was going to go because it allowed them to think differently later on and change the fate of the world. So even though everyone thought of him as a naive child who knew nothing about the nature of Spira, without that point of view, then Yuna's fate would have been the same as her father. Titus then even helps out by bringing in some blitzball analysis to enforce positivity. During a game, you have to think of blitz and nothing else, you know? Okay. Hmm. Ah. Oh. You can't think, that's a cute girl in the fifth seat from the right. And you can't be thinking about where you're going to go on that date. Because the minute you do, that's when you lose. You see, uh, Yuna, what I mean is, you really shouldn't worry, you know? Titus then learns about the ritual of the final summoning being the only way to defeat Sin, which is why they are engaging on the pilgrimage in the first place. And the only place they can find it is in Xanarkand, which Orin enforces that it is a city of ruins, something Titus is still in disbelief of. But I think this is his ultimate goal of seeing what truly happened to his Xanarkand, which is why he is even joining the party in the first place. You will go with us to Xanarkand? I'll go. <laughs> I'll go to Xanarkand to see it with my own eyes. The next day, we come across Rin, the owner of the travel agencies. Bintasa. Sorry? Ah, uh, forgive me, sir. I meant to say pardon me, but it came out in Albed. Oh, you're in Albed. Mm hmm. I am Rin owner of this establishment. Hello to Sadwi. He is also the one who initiates the mini-quest of us learning about the Albed language and mastering its translation. 
Suddenly, the chocobos are under attack by the chocobo eater and we engage battle with it. Of course, we either defeat it or we get pushed off of a cliff. It will not affect the story overall, but of course we don't end up beating it because it'll put a bit of a stain into our pride. At least that's how I felt whenever I feel like I couldn't beat a boss that we should be able to. Afterwards, with the offer of a free chocobo to ride the rest of the highway, we make our way to the entrance to Mushroom Rock Road, where we see more weapons and soldiers gathered together to prepare for an operation. Due to the nature of the operation, no one who isn't a crusader or Albed are allowed through. I'm glad to see Luzu and Gata's confidence in their ability to defeat Sin, even though all of the summoners know his attempt is futile. When the party attempt to pass through, of course they are denied, but shortly, we see Seymour, flanked by a couple of Guado guards, approach the party, and does the party a favor by letting them through to the command center. Hold, I have a request. Yes, Your Grace. I need to have Summoner Yuna and her guardians let through to the command center. But, but Maester Seymour, Maester Seymour, sir. Do not worry. I will take full responsibility. The party are then allowed through and they enter Mushroom Rock Road. The next thing we see is a scene of soldiers training and preparing to fight Sin. Seymour then does something that is rather unusual. He is motivating the soldiers and is almost supporting this operation. Despite its use of Machina weapons, which confuses Waka as he knows the Machina is forbidden by Yevon teachings. Seymour once again approaches the party and takes a keen interest this time in Orin and praises his abilities while complimenting Yuna that he is a great asset as a guardian. Waka then attempts to question Seymour about why he supports his operation in his very awkward tone, and well... Although it may be sacrilege to Yevon, their intentions are pure. And I, Seymour Guado, the person, not the maester of Yevon, as a denizen of Spira, I wish them well in their endeavor. But using Machina, that's bad, isn't it? Pretend you didn't see them. <sighs> Beg your pardon, but that's not something a maester should say. Then pretend I didn't say it. This pretentious tone is definitely unusual, almost to the point of it being suspicious. While he does a good job of masking the noble intentions behind this operation, something that shocks the party. And something about this conversation definitely resonated with Titus to the point that he almost sees it in his point of view, even though he doesn't actually like the guy. The party then make their way to the command center and to the start of the operation. Part 5 will now end here. If you're enjoying the series so far, leave a like on this video and consider subscribing to the channel. We are approaching 2,000 subscribers and it would be awesome if we can reach that milestone. Other than that, this is Enzo signing out and I will see you all in the next episode.